I'm not even gloat or nothing like that because that's mm-hmm. just not my style. I'm, cu- I'm humble. <laughs> if if by Christmas, well, I said by and by, um, by the Wolves game, but I'm pushing that along to Christmas. I mean New Year's. If by the first of Jan, we're first. <laughs> you don't want to see what I'm going to do, <laughs> but 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 going into the game, especially after Man City's BS win, and especially even after last week when Haaland didn't play, but De Bruyne's put it top corner for them to win. This game, Haaland came on, they got a dodgy penalty. <laughs> they went ahead of us. I went into the game thinking, shit, we need to win the game. And going to Stamford Bridge brings back so many nightmares, man. <laughs> my, my whole teenage years, <laughs> early 20s, nightmares at Stamford Bridge from the 6-0 in the Wenger's thousands, thousands game. Karen Gibbs getting sent off instead of Oxley Chamberlain, um, Jogba, Lampard, SCN, top corner, short, top corner goal. It's too many bad days at, at uh, Stamford Bridge. I remember Balak, man, I hated that guy. So going into it, I was, I was always definitely shook because the last two times we've gone there, we've won, but we haven't really dominated the game. Um, Chelsea got good players, Graham Potter's a good manager. It's a recipe for a tough game, but we went in there. It was nervy at, in, in the beginning, but we just got more comfortable, more comfortable, more comfortable. Sinchenko came in, and that just added to our progression. We could just pop in the ball, easy. Popping the ball around Chelsea's midfield, drive, driving through the, through the pitch, created chances. Um, we, it, we, 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 just, we just out, out, outplayed them. It wasn't even that difficult. We actually dominated them physically too. Saliba, Gabriel, nothing got past them. Everything that went into the channels, they ate up for, for dinner, man. It was it was too easy for them. Saliba is incredible. I won't lie to you. Saliba might be the best setter back in the league. And I'm, I'm not even shook anymore. <laughs> I'm not even shook anymore. Watching him yesterday dominate everybody. A bad well, thing is easy to dominate. <laughs> Havertz, Brojar, Mount, everybody. Got it. It was really, really good performance. And it's what's really impressive that we have the physicality to deal with all situations. We've got Granite Shaka, Party, Saliba, Gabriel, Ben White. And even though Jesus didn't score, it's causing their backline problems. Um, we probably should have scored um that header in the first half. That would have been goal of the season if he if he got his head on that. Yeah. But yeah, we got we went into half time nil nil. Um, I was wasn't I was still on the edge a little bit, but I knew we were the better team. We came that second half, I think we took it up to another level. I don't think Chelsea made it difficult for us, and we got a goal. We need to go from the corner, but I feel like we had way more chances in the game. I can't remember <laughs> every single chance, but we had way more chances in the game to score. But we completely dominated them. And the craziest that I saw going away from this game is that Chelsea had five shots in total. Chelsea at home had five shots and one on target. We basically did to them what we did to Brentford. We treated them like Brentford, where we just completely dominated the game from start to finish and let let it, let it continue. Um, we still need to add more players. Hopefully, in January we can do that. I hear I saw a, a, a report that um, that just the owners are going to back our tech fifty more in the January transfer window. Well, if we're top by. January 1st, we need to back him with 100 mil because this is a once in, once in a lifetime opportunity. When you're this close, we're, we're, even, we're not even that close here, but when you have this kind of opportunity and all our rivals are doing what they're doing, you really need to capitalize on it because this might not come for another 10 years. You never know. So you might as well spend the money now. I just got a question to ask. There's a popular saying you can kill the man. But you can't kill the idea. Have we got a rebirth like Azet in Jesus? Ah, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. Jay Kazet. Stop. <laughs> stop it. Gabriel J. Kazet. Have we got the rebirth? I didn't. Kill the man. I saw this out. I saw this. Boy, I yeah. couldn't kill the idea. I didn't. I didn't. Like Azet came back Brazilian. I can't, I can't be like that run. I can't. <laughs> nah, like Azet came like back, run, man. bro. Man got his hairline done and came back. No, I can't let that run. Jesus. No, Jesus. Nah, honestly, he does exactly what Lacazette does. <sighs> and the more flashy, the better. <laughs> the more enterprising, the better. <laughs> That's it. 
Oh my Lacazette God. used to dip him with a couple of goals by his workmanship. Every every year, Arsenal fans say, oh yeah, Lacazette, yeah, he does everything apart from score. Abba is the one that does his scoring, but he doesn't do what Lacazette offers. He doesn't give us what Lacazette gives us. That's what I'm getting. That's what he's used to doing for Arsenal right now, giving you everything but scoring. He's the rebirth Lacazette. <laughs> Just accept it. That's not a bad thing, but Arsenal need a number nine. Huh? You can't rely on, you need a number nine. He's, he's not an out and out. He's not an out and out goal scorer. He's doing everything but scoring. He's got what I think the last time he scored was what um, your game against Spurs. It's but he's, long got, time. he's got uh, eleven goals and assists. I know it's not. I, I don't want to do the goals and assists thing with a striker, but he's contributing. So, and if you watch, like you watch the start to finish. No, 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 no. Just about. <laughs> When you go from a Bamyang, by the way, a Bamyang, I saw he had eight touches yesterday throughout the whole game. Like I said, I mean, Jesus had 60 something touches throughout the whole game. So you know how busy he was. So he's just an all rounder. Yeah, he wanted to, be, wanted to be more clinical, but I feel he's still going to get 15 to 18 goals. Like I said, never right. got over 12, I think, ever. So. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um... It was a good win for Arsenal. Good performance. And you have to credit... You have to credit Arteta. And you have to credit the board. A couple of years ago, under Wenger and under um, Emery, you guys wanted that board set. You guys... He, he wanted the board to sell Arsenal as quick as possible. But I keep saying this, I feel like a broken record, but you, you can see they sat down with the manager, they sat down with Edu... They've implemented a style and a system that they want to go forward with and it's working. Oh, it's, it feels like Arsenal's been in a three-year project and we're seeing the culmination of this project come into fruition now. Like I said, this week, if, if Arsenal invest in this squad in January, cover up the, those gaps that they may have, I think they need a number nine. They could get that. Maybe another winger. I think, you could, and maybe like another set, um, set midfielder, if you could cover those three spots for me. Arsenal serious contenders, man. Serious. And I hate it. I hate it. Like, I'd rather Newcastle win the league than see Arsenal win it again. Because Arsenal play good football, but Arsenal fans are unbearable, man. They're like an ant in your shoes. Bro, I, I couldn't do it, bruv. I'd be head-topped if Arsenal won the league. Ah, oh, at work. <laughs> oh, we, we won the league. Bro, you man are still singing about this unbeaten run you went on about 50 years ago. Imagine if you won the league over Man City. Oh, <laughs> We, we we defeated the best team ever with yeah. Haaland as well. No, with Haaland, that yeah, they got Haaland, a generational striker, oh. and we finished on top of them. Nah, my head, I'd be, I'd lose all my hair. But if I top. if we if we win the league, I'm taking a few days off work, man. I'm going out. Man, <laughs> if you win the league, straight. I'm taking three days of work as well to cry, bro. I can't be in this country. I cannot uh, be in this country if Arsenal win the. I'll be in guard above. <laughs> I'm chilling, bro. Nah, I'd be I'd be rattled, but. Again, Arsenal are doing what they, they they need to do. They're winning. They're, they're staying consistent. They're winning. The performances are looking good as well. It's just everything just coming together for Arsenal. The the big question of Arsenal is can they keep it up? And that's the question. So far, third this season's gone, and they've kept it up. They played 13, won 11, drawn one, lost one. That's excellent. Can they keep it up? So far, the answer is yes. A third of season done. Are they going to keep it up when the games get more intense after the World Cup, when injuries are bound to happen? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Chelsea, for me, is, is an interesting thing. I can't really go to Ham on Graham Potter because that team is not built for him and by him. That's another man's project that he's working with. It's going to take a while. He's going to need a transfer window to come, bring in players that he wants and he needs to implement his system. So I think next year... We can we can really start judging Graham Potter if Chelsea don't invest in January. Right now, it's not his team. Yeah, he can he can do something with them, but they're not his players. So that's that's the kind of struggle. He had that new manager bounce, but now you can see Wagwan. So yeah, I'm not really gonna go to him on Graham Potter, but they need a striker. Abama Yang finished like his hairline. Sad. That I came back though. Be... Yeah, but that that spray paint, man. You can, when you, when they zoom in on the, on the thing, is that Beijing, bro? You can see it. I was like, bro, my guy. Yeah, man. I was like, Came oh, from Beijing, Donny, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> but you're like, I thought Aubameyang would be a great signing for them because I was thinking, yeah, he's still a finisher, but yeah, it looks like he's done out here, man. Sad, but Chelsea, just a new striker. 
Raheem Shillings. <sighs> he's not shilling, man. Uh, he, he, I don't know, man. I feel, I feel like he's just chilling. He's like, you know, I've done everything at Man City. I'm going to get my payday at Chelsea and relax. He's not really doing much. Thiago Silva can be got at and he's been got at. You can see that Kukurel is not really Kukurel in right now. I don't know what it is. He's not really playing what he I'm at Chelsea. Harvest is in and out, Mount in and out. Yeah, you can't really blame Graham Potter right now. Just give him time, Chelsea fans. Let him implement this team, let him get his own players in. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, good win for Arsenal. So a quick point, yeah. Havertz is terrible. He might be worse than Werner, you know. You thought Werner was terrible. Like, Werner was some some sort of, some sort of way effective, but Havertz is no effect, <laughs> nothing, no pace, nothing. Start of the season, I said to you, man, I would take um, Werner at United, but I, I said it. Yeah, he doesn't score, but his enterprise, he's he's a um, German like his bro. bro, and he's gone back bro. to Germany, he's banging again. I'll take him. Timo Lambic. <laughs> Timo who? <laughs> The white, the white um, Elanga fan. No, have some respect for Werner. No, 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 no. Ray, Ray Werner, man. He's putting some work in his career. No, nah, Ray <laughs> Werner, man. <laughs> no, nah, man. No. Nah. Werner, if you're watching this year, I respect you. I, I can't disrespect you with the white Elanga. Ah, Werner must be a suicide watch, but Elanga, ugh! Wow. <laughs> don't do it, bro. We love you. You're not Elanga. Ah, oh, the disrespect. Havertz is the one, though. He's t- how do you know one? He's terrible. Havertz is shit. That guy He's is crap, dead. But let, oh, I need to go in on, on Chelsea, man, because let me go yeah, let me go in on Chelsea first. Because boy, Chelsea is a cemetery over there, man. It is. <laughs> so many dead bodies, fam. Kai Havertz. Dead body. Dead body, fam. You know what, yeah? Or Bamiyang. He's always been like a a striker, straight number nine, not really one that gets involved much in the game apart from scoring goals. So he did. There was a chance where Havertz, I don't know what he was doing, he crossed it in, but Abamia made a good movement. And if if he just passed Abamia, he would have had a tap in. So everyone's saying Abamia had a shit game, but if Havertz made the correct decision, Abamia would have scored and we wouldn't be having this conversation. So as much as he did. He was ineffective and he only had eight touches. He put himself in a position to score and he wasn't fed. So people got to consider that as well. Kai Havers, yeah. Dead body, inconsistent, ineffective. And his decision making is not the best as well. Chelsea needs to be ruthless and let him go. He's a dead body. That's number one. Ruben lost his cheek. <laughs> Supermodel. Dead body. Passenger. Passenger. Oh, wow. I, I thought he went off at half time. And then mm. when he when he actually got solved, I was in shock. My, my jaw dropped him. I didn't realise he was actually on the pitch. Dead body. He's not good enough to play for Chelsea. Passenger. Big, strong, tall, athletic. You know, you don't see that on the pitch. You do not see that on the pitch. All of Chelsea's midfield were invisible. Thomas Partey, that one man, he was the only person that could see in midfield. He was outshining Chelsea's whole midfield, which is crazy. But, so, yeah. Kai Havertz, dead body. Loftus Cheek, dead body. Aubameyang, yeah. Georgina didn't do much either. Georgina didn't do much. Aubameyang, if you're not going to build a team around him, dead body. It is what it is. Who else? Captain America. Everyone, Captain America. Christian Pulisic. Dead body. I know like you get coverage in America because he's American, but get rid of him. He's shit. It is what it is. Injuries, whatever. He's shit. Could the Bali fam. Where? <laughs> he's he's ch- counting his money at home. He's counting his money. <laughs> Paid all that money. People were talking about you're the best defender in the world. And you can't even get ahead of flipping Chalaba. Come on, man. I don't want to say dead body, but it's, it's not looking good. It's not looking good at all. I'm thinking um, Aspie's a dead body, but Aspie was probably... He did all right. He did all he right. Did all right. Yeah. He kept Martinelli honest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Martinelli couldn't do his thing against him. So shout out to Aspie. 
Cucurella, I don't know what you're doing for the goal. Man's mm. doing slow wine, fam. <laughs> <laughs> slow wine with Jacopo. I don't know what he was doing. Just standing there holding him, watching the ball go in. Crazy. Brojo, that guy. <laughs> Bruv. He, he's a, he's he's a, a nice guy, man. Bumper car bandit, you know. He, yeah. <laughs> all he does is just run, fam. He's like... <laughs> No, that's, what, that's, 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 that's Conor Gallagher. They threw Conor Gallagher, Gallagher on just to run. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say he Rashidi, just looks yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Conor Gallagher, he's, he's not good enough. Bro, he's, he's got hair, that's enough. it. He's got hair. Good, honest English lad. But <laughs> fam, he's not good enough. Bro's just not good enough. Well, over 50% of the squad is not good enough. They need a whole squad overall. That's crazy to say after spending what nearly exactly. 300 million in the summer. They spent what? Yeah, they spent a ton Wasn't of money. For fun alone, like 80 mil. Yeah. Yeah, it's not looking good. I don't know if they're going to give part of the money because all the money that they spent. But yeah, they need a whole squad overall. But that's enough about the bad. Let's talk about the good. Arsenal dominated the game from start to finish. They looked confident, they looked assured. They looked like they were meant to be favourites in the game. Arteta, tactically outdone Potter as well, bringing um, Zinchenko in midfield. That just bamboozled Chelsea's whole team. Because when he came in midfield, it kind of messed up their press because they had an extra body. So they couldn't really do anything. So they they were able to bring it through the midfield with ease and then, yeah, do their thing. Thomas Partey, Boston midfield again. What a player. What a player. Odegaard done his thing. Jesus was busy. He was a threat. Martinelli, he didn't do much, to be honest. Saliba. That guy's a bully, man. He's a young bully. 21-year-old, 22. Bully in Prem. Bully in the Prem, basically. It's it's mad. It's mad to see. I will say, he has got a little mistake in him. Mm. He does slip up every once in a while because he did slip up, gave um, Aubameyang the opportunity, but that shot was blocked. But I do notice he has a little mistake in him. But yeah, Chelsea, I mean, not Chelsea, Arsenal, they're looking good. They're looking a threat, looking confident. The squad depth, the squad depth is the biggest issue, in my opinion. That's where they're going to have issues. But yeah, let me ask, um, what do you think are the main hurdles that are preventing Arsenal from going all the way? There's two things. There's uh I wanna say I wanna say goals, but it's more of a thing of being clinical. I feel we can always create chances, but being clinical is t- finishing our breakfast, finishing them chances is gonna be an issue. And because because we haven't got killers up top. If you look if you look back at um I say arguably the best front three in Prem history, um Mane, Firmino, and Salah, that front three, that's like what? Arguably. I said arguably. <laughs> I was gonna say Rudy Ronaldo Tevez. <laughs> nah, nah. Fam, what? I, 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 I'm not really classing them as three up front because I saw you 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 guys did it that for like one season, two seasons max. Whereas yeah. Liverpool's only for five, six seasons straight. You don't play four for two a lot in the early years. Let's be fair. Rooney, Ronaldo, Tevez is the best front three in the Prem history. The yeah. thing is, like, even just that, those seasons you play four three three, you still play four for two that season a lot. But as individual players, there's, oh, we're not gonna, oh, I'm not gonna get into <laughs> it. But working together as a front three, Liverpool's front three is better. I have to say. It. In terms of working together, combining with each other. That 08 season, Rooney and Ronaldo Tevez, the crud them men were on. Nah, I've never seen nothing like that, man. Those three were demonic. Tevez was the, was the hound. Rooney was doing everything. Ronaldo was just banging in goals. That front three was mad. Nah, I ain't taking nothing, nothing over that front three. I, I, I still said the facts. They said that front three, Salamani, Firmino, is arguably the best. Okay, it's, it's, okay. it's, in a, it's in a conversation. Arguably okay. the best. And the reason that why they're, they're the best, well, in, in that conversation, is because they can, they can just eat, Salah and Mali score 25 goals each in season. So I'll say for Arsenal, it's being clinical, 
and second secondly is the depth. Those midweek games uh, after the after New Year are going to be very very um, challenging for us to to maintain our form, to maintain intensity. So we need depth. I'll say particularly in the front three areas, front front attacking players. And if you get, I would say, if you get one attacker, I think you'll be all right in the long term. And yeah, just hopefully score enough goals. But I saw a stat last week that one pace of space to score, if you continue continue this current rate, ninety something goals. And to be to be within a title shot, you need to score about ninety five goals. So I really got last week. We had we have thirty one by this time, and last season we scored thirty one goals in about twenty twenty odd games. <laughs> So I'm really at 30 at, after 13 games. So we're, we're doing well. I think the two things stopping Arsenal are Pep and um, Haaland. That's, it. <laughs> that's the two things. You, you oh, ain't that's, got that's Pep great, and you that's ain't a got Haaland. That's a great point. <laughs> that's the two things stopping Arsenal because Arsenal are a good team and I can see them maintaining this form. But you haven't got a Haaland to bail you out. You ain't got a Pep. That's the two things. Because right now, I'm, I'm scratching my head thinking about Arsenal. I'm thinking, what are the main weaknesses? Arsenal pretty much covered, man. Arsenal are doing what they need to do. Pep and Haaland are the two things stopping you guys from going all the way. Yeah. You sure it's not Haaland than KDB? Uh, if you said three things, then I put KDB in there as well. But Pep is the mastermind. Haaland is the, the killer. He's the assassin. And Pep is the... You know, the, the orchestrator. The, I can't, you know, can't argue with that. Yeah. yeah. One more I would, I would add to that is experience. Mm. You know, like later in the season when it gets to those tough games, Arteta's, I guess he's he's been there as an assistant coach, but his players haven't been there. That's a whole different mindset, whole different energy. So we'll see if they can handle that. To be honest, I think you need to go through at least one time to be able to deal with it. And they haven't yet. So we'll see. 